do some problems. So you're asked to calculate the pH of a 0 0.30 molar sodium fluoride solution. You're given the Ka for hydrofluoric acid. So your first step is to identify the major species in solution and determine the dominant reaction. Find the Ka for the reaction and then set up the table. So this is sodium fluoride. We have sodium ions. We're gonna ignore the sodium ions always. And we have fluoride ions. So we need to take the fluoride ion and we need to react it with water. We have an equilibrium. Fluoride acts as a Lewis base. It accepts H plus from the water. So we have hydrofluoric acid as a product and hydroxide as a product. The molarity of the salt will be the molarity of the fluoride ion. So for our initial, we will have 0 0.30 for fluoride ion, zero for hydrogen fluoride, and zero for hydroxide. We're going to go in the forward direction. So we have a minus x plus x plus x. So now that we have our table, the equilibrium will be a minus three zero, I'm sorry, a point three zero minus x, x and x. We said that fluoride is a Lewis base. Fluoride is accepting H plus, it's a base, so we need a Kb. We know how to do that. We know that the Kb, I'm sorry, Ka times Kb equals one times 10 to the minus 14. We were given the Ka for hydrofluoric acid. So we just put that value in for the Ka. Now we have one equation, one unknown. We solve for Kb. Our Kb expression is products over reactant. Remember water is a liquid. It does not show up in our equilibrium expression. So the hydrofluoric acid was X. So we take the X and put it in. The hydroxide was also X, so we put that in. And then the fluoride ion was 0.3 minus X, we put that in. We're gonna assume that this X is small and that will simplify our equation. And now we just need to solve for x. So if we look at our table, our table tells us that x is our hydroxide. We have it in our table. We just need to go back and look at our table. So now we know the concentration of hydroxide. So if we have the concentration of hydroxide, we can put that in our equation for pOH. We can solve for the pOH. Then we use the next equation that pH plus pOH equals 14. So we take our pOH. We put it in, we solve for pH, and we get the answer.
Let's do another problem. So we have to set up our ice table. We have to look at what the question is asking. We're asked to calculate a pH. We have a point 36 molar sodium acetate solution. We're given the Ka of acidic acid. Remember we said sodium is a spectator ion. So we will ignore the sodium. We're gonna start with acetate. We always want to take the anion, react it with water and have an equilibrium. When we do that, we will get acidic acid plus hydroxide. So now we can fill in our table. We've got our molarity of acetate. Initially, we have zero acidic acid, zero hydroxide. We're going to consider the forward reaction. So it's minus x plus x plus X. So for our equilibrium values, we get 0 0.30 minus X, X, and X. Acetate is acting as a base. It is accepting a proton, so we need a KB. We can get that by taking the Ka of acidic acid and putting it in our equation. Ka times Kb equals one times 10 to the minus 14. So this Kb is for our equilibrium. We set up our Kb expression, products over reactants. We use our ice table to put in the x, for the acidic acid, the X for the hydroxide, the 0.36 minus X for the acetate. Now we're going to assume that this X is small, and so we can simplify the equation and get this. We solve for X. We look at our ice table. Our ice table tells us that our X is equal to our hydroxide concentration. So we can take our hydroxide concentration, we can put it in our equation and solve for pOH. And then I did this in my head and I solved for pH. So I used the pH plus pOH equals 14 and did this well, I'd use a calculator. Let's practice another problem. So we are asked to calculate the pH of a 0 0.10 molar ammonium chloride solution. We're given a Kb for ammonia. Ammonium ion is a weak base. We said, I'm sorry, ammonium ion is a weak acid. We set up an ice table with the ammonium ion reacting with water. So ammonium ion will give an H plus to the water. That's how we end up getting hydronium ion and ammonia in equilibrium. Our initial is from 
our molarity of the salt. We have 0 0.10 molar ammonium ion. We're going to consider the forward direction. So we get zero ammonia initially, zero hydronium ion initially. Minus X plus X plus X. So 0 0.10 minus X, X and X. Ammonium ion is acting as a weak acid, so we need a Ka. We use our equation. We solve for Ka. We set up our Ka expression, products over reactants. We use our ice table to put in our x. We assume this x is small, and we simplify. And then we solve for x. And then remember to always use your ice table to tell you what x is. So we said the x is in the column for hydronium ion. So that means we have the concentration of hydronium ion. We can go straight to the equation for pH, and we can solve for our pH. Let's do one more problem. We're asked, we're asked for grams of sodium cyanide. We're dissolving it in water and we're making 250 milliliters of a solution with a pH of 10. We're given a Kb for cyanide. Remember, sodium is a spectator ion, so we're gonna set up our ice table with cyanide as the base. If the pH is 10, then the pOH is 4. So what I did is I used the pOH is 4, and that gave me my concentration of hydroxide. I start with the initial of X for my cyanide, because I don't know what cyanide is, and then 0 and 0. I do know my concentration of hydroxide. So I can use that to get my concentration of hydrocyanic acid. I'm going to use that to subtract from my X for the cyanide. That's how I get my equilibrium here for my cyanide. So I'm gaining the same amount of hydrocyanic acid as I'm gaining the hydroxide, I got the hydroxide concentration from my pOH. Now I can set up my Kb expression. So my Kb is 2.04 times 10 to the minus 5. It's going to be products of a reactants. I use my ice table to put in the values, and then this will go on the bottom. I can solve for X. Now my X is my molarity of cyanide initially, which is equal to my molarity of sodium cyanide. I had 200, I had 0 0.250 liters. I multiply that by my molarity. My liters cancels. Then I use my molar mass. My moles cancel. And I end up getting grams. And remember, this is a salt. It has both sodium and cyanide. And that's how I got the molar mass of my sodium cyanide. 